Welcome to Pastor's Chat today. Well, we're looking at Psalm 63. Yeah, I was thinking, I never realized until we started studying through the Psalms like this with you in these chats that David wrote so many of his Psalms when he was fleeing from his son Absalom. The darkest time of his life, the lowest time of his life, in the depths of despair, no doubt emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, he cries out to God and he writes these Psalms as he remembers God and knows that it's only God that can help him be delivered from this dilemma that he's found himself in. And we read Psalm 63 and we see David worshiping. The first verses of the chapter, we've read this chapter already, but I hope you're reading it over and again. He said that he was going to seek the Lord. And he said, just like I saw you in the sanctuary, I'm going to turn this wilderness because the title of the Psalm tells us he's in the wilderness of Judah. He's in the deepest, darkest. He's in the lowest elevation of the earth, literally, but also the lowest elevation in his life. But he says, I'm going to turn my wilderness into a worship center. And that's what he saying, so as I look for you in the sanctuary, there I saw your power and your glory. And then he says in verse 3 through 5 here that he's going to still praise the Lord. Have you ever heard the saying, when the praises go up, the blessings come down? Boy, David knew that lesson well. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied with moral fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. So David not only seeks after God, desires God with all his heart in this deep, difficult time, he also praises the Lord. He opens his mouth with his lips. I mean, he speaks audibly. He talks to God out loud, praising God for His loving kindness and His goodness. And I'm telling you, it would be hard to find it at this time. And you know, actually, if you read 2 Samuel chapter 15, you're going to find that David sent the Ark of the Covenant that the priest and Zadok and the priest and Abathar, they were bringing out with him. They were bringing the, the Ark of the Covenant with them. And David said, no, take it back to Jerusalem. David didn't need the symbolisms of the Ark of the Covenant to praise and worship God. He knew what the Ark of the Covenant meant. He knew what the mercy seat was. He knew that even out in the wilderness, he could abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Look at the next verses. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. Remember in the first verse he says, early will I seek you? In other words, in the morning when I get up, I'm seeking you. Now he says, when I go to bed and lie my head down on the pillow, I'm going to seek you then through the night watches. There were three different night watches for the Jewish people. One, as the sun went down and up to maybe 10 o'clock, then 10 o'clock through maybe 2 o'clock in the middle of the night. And the third watch was from maybe 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning till the sun would rise. David said, through the night watches, I will meditate on you. Every time I wake up, I'm going to think about you and I'm going to watch for you. And then he says, because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. And of course, that was a reference to the shadow of the wings of the cherubim over the top of the mercy seat. And David says, even out here, I'm under the shadow of your wings. My soul follows close behind you, verse 9 or verse 8. He says, your right hand upholds me. Oh, I think of that verse in John chapter 10, verse 29, where it says, I give unto them eternal life, Jesus said to the disciples, and they will never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. David said, because it, he is at my right hand, the right hand of God, the omnipotent hand of God that flung the stars into space. David said, that's the hand I will trust in. And my friend, so what David did, he sought after God, he praised God, and he says, I will remember you on my bed. I'll remember you. And we remember who God is. He's the great I am. He is the ever-present, eternal God. He never changes. I will remember you. I'll remember who you are, and I'll remember what you have always done for me to help me in my time of need. 
That's what we can do in the time of our trials. Well, God bless you, and you have a wonderful, wonderful Lord's Day.